Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. So today is going to be all about the output stage in this radio, or stages, I guess I should say. It's kind of two stages. We're going to take a look at a much better copy of the schematic in just a second, but basically, just so you can see, we're going to be looking just at this part of the, of the radio here. Starting with the second half of this tube, basically, where the audio is being amplified, sent over to this tube, amplified, sent out to the speaker. So we're going to take a closer look at that schematic on the radio itself, which is not switched on right now. So we're talking about, uh, this is the output tube, and this is a two-part tube. Part in here is actually a triode, and uh, basically you can almost think of it this way with the radio. If you look at the volume control, this is true in most of these radios, the volume control itself is the divider between, well, okay, pretty much, pretty much the divider between the radio part of the radio and the audio part. So it's right in the volume control where the radio signals are being eliminated or done away with, I guess you could say, in the detector part. And then uh, for the volume control, it's all audio from there. Anyway, let's take a look at the schematic before I uh, start talking needlessly here. Okay, so here's the schematic of the radio, a much, much better copy of it. Thank you very much. I was using a, a rough copy before, now I'm using a, a rough copy now. <laughs> Somebody will understand what I meant by that. So let's zoom in on the audio part of this radio here. Okay, so I'm not going to include the detector and the AVC in this part of examining the radio. I'm going to start really with, let's just track back the grid on the triode here and you'll see it goes right, doesn't it go right to the volume control? No. Oh. There's the volume control. Wait a minute. There it is. Da, 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 da. Well, I don't know what happened to me there. <laughs> Let's try that again. From the grid, I don't know what happened to me. Through this capacitor, we're going backwards now to, into the radio, to the volume control slider. And then up here is where the audio and some RF, if there's any left, is here. I got quiet suddenly, didn't I? Here we go, here we go, down here. Okay, okay, no longer quiet. <laughs> See this big resistor here? How much is it? 2 megohm, 2.2 megohms. This is a great big resistor. So it's really holding back the pressure up here. It's like a dam. Think of this like a dam. Holding back the flow of electricity up here. Damming it up so it's building up in this area. Kind of think of it that way. On the other side, there's just a trickle here. But you know what? You can fill a swimming pool with a trickle. It just takes a long time. The trickle of electricity here comes into this swimming pool of the grid. It's a very, very small swimming pool. So it really doesn't take much of a charge trickling through this big resistor, leaking through the dam to raise the potential, to raise the voltage, or lower it in fact, to make it more negative, here. This is an important factor. What am I doing way over here now? I'm supposed to be back over here. I'm not supposed to be talking about any of that stuff. <laughs> okay, I won't. So we come down here now. This big resistor, that's what got me going. Pushing stuff this away towards this not so big a resistor, right? Two megohms here, quarter of a megohm here. You can imagine most of the audio is heading this way, down to the chassis. This guy here, it's a mystery how this is used in every radio. This is another tab on the back of the volume control. It's a mystery to me. But you can see it's tied into the tone control. So somehow, somehow moving the tone control is affecting the tonal quality of the sound coming right out of here. Okay, so this guy's job is to block any DC that might be sitting over here. Five or ten negative volts sitting here. 
We don't want that coming through. But the audio we want coming right through. Another high value resistor. So even if a small amount of charge makes it through here, it will affect the potential of this grid circuit. So the tube will amplify the signal, and we have a stronger, more powerful signal coming here. The DC part of the plate, B plus voltage, cannot get through this capacitor, or should not. That's something we're going to check. And on this end, here's the grid going into the power tube, the output tube, with a large resistor here, so not going to bleed much charge out of here. So you don't need much charge traveling along here to affect the potential of this wire. But at the same time, if you don't put in a resistor here, the charge will come across and just build up, build up, build up, build up, and eventually you'll have just a very negative uh, grid here, that's my belief. So you need some kind of resistor here to bleed off a little bit of Coulomb, Coulombs down this way. I'll right back into the... Yeah, enough said there. <laughs> I don't fully comprehend what's going on here. Someday I will, maybe even later today. So, um... So here's the B-plus line. So B-plus coming through this... Type, I replaced this. This is now the Cool, cool ohm resistor to the plate. I replace this great big capacitor here, and from here it's going to the screen and through this not so big resistor uh, to the plate over here. This would be the plate resistor for this. Unusual arrangement, but that's okay. I don't know what's going on. Don't go over there anyway. Stay over here, Jim. Okay, so this capacitor here is almost certainly trying to get rid of any RF that's still here. It's a tiny capacitor. This one is a bigger capacitor, but still fairly small. This is the one that's associated with the tone control. And basically, by moving the slider, if you move the slider up here, You've just grounded the end of this capacitor. You're going to drain out high frequency sound. You're going to uh, reduce the trouble. Why, why connect it here? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So now the output's coming out of this uh, tube. It's from the plate, it's fed down through here. A transformer transforms it into energy or power on this side. This capacitor. Again, you know, I think it's just to drain out, short out any RF. You don't want to waste it in here, I think. It's kind of the deal. Not exactly sure what this capacitor does, but it's very common. Commonly installed. And then here we are, other side of the output transformer on the back of the speaker. And there's the voice coil. 400 ohms. No, 400 cycles. So at 400 cycles, the impedance would be 3 ohms for the mantle version of this radio, which is what I've got here. I've got the mantle version. But only 1.85 ohms for the console. And my guess is the console is a much bigger speaker. A bigger speaker, bigger voice coil wire. Probably a little more of it to drive the bigger speaker cone, but the result is lower resistance. See how low those are, right? You now we're used to 8 ohms. Uh, 3 ohms and less than 2 ohms and then here's the hum coil which we studied and discovered it probably is the reason why this radio wasn't humming like a son of a gun oops probably because of this guy now, I think I've been fooled on some previous radios about that okay so what are we gonna do now we looked everything over what we will do is uh, we're going to feed in an audio signal into this tube, into this triode. We'll feed it in right at the top of the volume control as if it's coming from the radio. Okay. That should operate this tube, produce a signal, goes right throughout the speaker. We can then look at the signal a couple of ways. One is on the scope. 
And another one would be uh, a piece of software I have on my computer. I uh, would look at harmonics and stuff like that. That might be an interesting place to start. We'll just feed a signal through and take a look at what it looks like coming out here. If it doesn't look good, then we can track back and try to figure out what's going on, or maybe we can figure it out right from that point, what's going on. Uh, my concern is mostly around this capacitor uh, leaking and pushing this grid potential positive. That's my main concern this whole deal. Let's just look at the size of these capacitors. This is a fairly large one here. And my experience so far with this radio is the capacitors seem to be okay. Here's another fairly large one, but it's, that's, that's in the radio. We don't want to touch that yet. Just out here in the audio part. Any other big guys? No, I don't think so. Not even big. This doesn't even qualify as big. It's just bigger. Okay, let's set up for this. Okay, I think we're all set to go here. So uh, what I've done is I've got the audio generator ready to go. I've got it hooked up via this wire to the two outside terminals on the volume control here. And then I have a voltmeter here connected to not quite the same point. Uh, instead, the voltmeter is reading the voltage that's on the slider part of the volume control. So it kind of shows what is making it further into the radio. Uh, that's, my, that's the objective. This here. And that's going to read volts AC. Let's, now I, I have this on already, so let's let's fiddle with it and see what happens to this voltage level. Not much is happening there. Now it could be because I have the volume turned right down. Yeah, it is. Let's turn it up. This should go up. Come on, man. It's doing a lot of weird things, isn't it? Actually, it's not doing anything. <laughs> That's what's weird. It's not doing weird things. So, good chance the uh, generator is not generating from button problems that I perpetually have there. So, to counteract that problem, I have... I have, but I can't find it. I'll have to use this. I have a... A little test speaker I like to use. We'll use this one. So I'm just going to hook a speaker up to the output here and uh, make sure it's working. That's part of the fun of using uh, vintage equipment. Uh, not only are you trying to fix the uh, fix the radio you're working on and trying to fix your own knowledge, you're also trying to fix all your shop equipment <laughs> all the time. All repairs, all the time. Turn this down. Now, it, it, this is not meant to drive a speaker, but it, it can and it will. Oops, did I yell in the microphone there? Okay, no, no sound come forth. Does the speaker work? <laughs> okay, assuming the speaker is working, we should hear that. Bingo. Okay, we'll leave the sound on so we know for sure it's working right now. We'll watch this. Volume up, volume down. That's not doing much. That's a complete flop here. What's going wrong? Where are we going wrong? Okay, let's get rid of this sound. Pretty sure that's going to continue working. Why, why, why? So let's see. Let's check on the end of me. You know, I could have a defective wire here. So I'm going to move the voltmeter right to here. Basically, there we go. So we know we got four, four volts of that for sure coming from here. Yeah, look at that. Now that's all working right. Okay, so the signal's arriving at the volume control. I've got it going through just because I'm a little bit nervous about stuff. A little hard to see in the camera there. So I have the feed coming 
from the uh, signal generator. That's, that's this one here. And it's going through a resistor. This resistor is a 400 ohm resistor. It's not very big. And then through a 0.01 capacitor onto the top of the volume control. You can look at you. I think you can see what I've done. Can you see? In the, in the camera there? Maybe not. So I clipped the clip lead onto a paper tag instead of right onto the conductor. I think that's all I've done there. These are these are, are for sure. That's what I did. The radio is not on, by the way. I haven't turned it on yet. Get on the metal. Okay, I think I'm on the metal now. What I'll do is I'll move the voltmeter lead back to the slider position. Be easy to clip some paper here too. How do we do? That doesn't look right. No, I don't think I got it. I know I got it there. I'm sure I got it now. There we are. Perfect. Okay now. <laughs> Okay, I've made it past the volume control. Is it, is it wonky? So on the slider is a 5 volt signal coming from my signal generator. getting used to it so it should show us the the waveform and it, it has but maybe I can maybe if I do that. okay so I'm changing I think I'm changing the time base but that's good now we can kind of see it there and it gives the frequency 0.995 and the voltage so we get a good look at the signal that's on the slider of the volume, volume control turn it down so this is a this this guy's sampling very slowly now, so I gotta take my time with it. 0.2 volts all the way up to 5 volts. I don't really know, that sounds like a lot to me, but we, we'll find out. Uh, I'll just turn it down for now. About a quarter of a volt, a quarter to a third of a volt. Okay, now we want to watch the output, so let's take a peek at the scope. I'm going to talk about that for a second, too. So here's the scope, no signal into it, it's just tracing nothing. It looks like it isn't even working, but I... Yes, the camera's on, see? Now, if you look at the line on the scope, you see it getting brighter somewhere about here. I don't see that with my eye at all. And then you see it getting brighter again over here. I can see this. I cannot see that. So there are camera effects here because of the shuttering of the camera. And you know, again, it's it's not like your eyeball. It's not analog, right? It's taking a picture, 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 and you get the uh, wagon wheel effect. Just to show it to you, how 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 this can work, and a little bit of an experiment. The the white line you can see in here. All I'm going to do is put more light onto the face of my scope, more or less light onto the face of the scope. Let me just get my light bulb here. Watch what happens to that. Do you see what it did? Now look, does the scope look any brighter? Now take the light away. Take more light away. More light away. All the light away. <laughs> and as usual, the irony irony enters enters into the training course here. <laughs> that line, white line was supposed to come back. So the point I'm making here is, when you're looking at my videos, you're looking through a camera that has effects on here that I don't even see myself if I look right at the instrument, rather than look at the TV screen, which by the way is just up here. Oh, that's kind of a weird effect. So 
but what this is going to show us is what the speaker is seeing. So we got to look at what's going in and look at what's coming out. Uh, there's better ways of doing this, but we're going to do it like this. I mean, it's a dual trace scope, so I can put the both traces on the scope. I probably will. I probably will. Let's go back to the radio view. I'm getting overly excited here at this point. Okay, so I think we're ready to fire this guy up. I really got to stop saying fire him up. That just sounds terrible. There he goes. Dim bulbs are looking good. We are go for full power. I've been watching too many space movies lately. Turn down the volume here just in case this is a screamer. I hear it. Now you might say, well, what about the radio signal that would be there too? Yes, there's a radio signal coming from the radio part sitting on that volume control, but I've hardly turned this up. Okay, so that is just being blasted by my signal generator. And if we take a look at the scope here, oh, for crying out loud. Now what I see when I look at the scope is a continuous line right across. I, I, I don't see anything happening here. It's a camera effect. So we see the tone, and we see what looks like a hum. Now that hum could be legitimate. It could be coming from my signal generator. Oh, look at the display on the scope. It's on the I think there'd be some way to overcome this. Turning up the brightness on the scope itself doesn't seem to help much. Well, I can't do anything about it. Trace the speed up. That's, well, you see what that's done. And this is not, it, look, it looks like it's, wow, it looks like it's triggered on, the interesting, triggered on the video almost, but on the, uh, with my eyeball, it's running wild, running wild. filter on here. I'm not going to be able to get it to stop stable. And I'm adjusting the triggering level, but I have trouble with the scope all the time. Let's give it more. Sometimes you don't have enough signal on here. It's That's a real mess. Well, I'm going to have to leave it like that. Phooey. Okay, it's a jumpy mess, but you can see what looks like a 60 cycle hum coming through it, and then you see the actual signal. That's terrible. You gotta do something about that. But for now, it's okay. Very, very low signal going in. Here, let me switch this over here. You can, can't even see the scope. More lighting changes. Uh, you can kind of see it there now. That's really horrible. Okay, can't do more about that. Let's see what we can do next. We want to... So we got... Okay, i got to figure out what's going on with the scope and get it to stabilize. Do, do I not have... Is the ground come falling off? Okay, you know what? Yeah. Okay, so the ground fell off now. Let me get this set up and working properly here. Hang on. Okay, well, I, I, I didn't succeed in getting anything to look any better here. But if we look at the uh, display, again, we can see the actual tone frequency. And then there looks like a hum frequency. So to check if that's a hum introduced by my own equipment, I'm going to turn down the output of the frequency generator. No, there's the hum signal sitting there. What I assume is a hum. It's jumping around a lot, eh? And I'll actually pull the wires out. Let me switch cameras here. You can watch me do this. 
and pull out the source lead. So that allows the radio signal to come out the speaker, by the way. And I'll pull the ground off. Didn't really do anything. You still see that hum signal. What's left connected to the radio that could do that? Nothing really. Okay, put that back in. Put in our signal. So I'm going to turn this up and we're going to watch what, what am I going to turn up. Let's fool with the volume control first. Okay, I'll put this down a little bit. You may not be able to see the scope. If something really exciting happens there, I'll I'm just... That'll call cats from all over the... Let's... Yeah, now it's not going to trigger. You darn scope, you. Okay, so now it's triggering on the line. That's actually better that way, isn't it? So you can see that this has stopped moving, this part. That's a 60 cycle hum for sure. Whoops. Stuck my hand right in front of the camera. Let's try that again. So you can still see the 60 hum. And it's frozen on the screen now. It's not drifting. And that tells me it really is a 60 cycle hum coming in there from who knows where just now. Won't worry too much more about it. Crank up the level. Was hurting my ears frankly it got awfully loud in here I can't say I heard any distortion in that signal at all uh, it sure seemed great to me it's one of the problems with trying uh, a, a radio like this um, you know to see what it what happens when the volume is up full well the volumes up full it's <laughs> it's really loud that's what happens so I know if I want to scope the output to see if there's clipping or something like that happening. Oh, i got to turn the level way up. Well, let's do it. Actually, I am on the output. What am I talking about? Okay, everybody hold your ears. Actually, you know what? I can, I can calm down the sound here. Hey, camera. Just turn down my microphones here while we're doing this. I don't blast your ears. Certainly, certainly blast this through the house. Um, yeah, you know what? Actually, I don't need to have the radio volume up so high. The clipping could be occurring. Not true. Not true what I was going to say. This uh, volume control is throttling the signal all the way through the circuits that we're about to look at. So uh, I, I was thinking for a minute that maybe the signal was wide open into the first two, but no, no, no. It's throttled ahead of the first of the triad. Okay, baby. get this turned up really loud you'll see something something happening at the top yeah that's just my meter warning me there we go oh boy okay so what that showed let's turn it down is that at the highest levels Highest volume levels. The trace did something funny at the peaks. The uh, peaks kind of folded over themselves. I don't know how to describe it. That's really not a good way to describe it. The peaks got the upper part of the sine wave got very misshapen. Uh, that for sure is done by the introduction of harmonics, and that's probably done by uh, something being pushed out of limits. There's two tubes involved here. Um, and that was so loud, frankly, why would I even be concerned? This radio is not going to be played that loud. That was almost painfully loud. What it does show, though, is there's a pretty good signal coming out of here before it reaches that distortion phase. 
Wow, so that indicates it's working really quite well. Well enough, that's for sure. So the next thing we should take a look at, we could have done this first actually, is the DC voltage on the grid of the of the uh, uh, output tube. Now, Okay, so uh, what you're looking at now is the uh, any sound in my shop, because this is based on a microphone, including my voice, is being analyzed by a piece of software you're looking at in the lower right corner of the screen there. So if I'm quiet, you won't you won't see my voice on there. And by, by the way, there's a delay again, about a half a second, second delay. So I'll just be quiet for a minute. Look at the upper display, you'll see it's a sine wave. And the lower display, you'll see it's a frequency... Uh, a frequency graph and right at 1k 1000 hertz you see the tone smack on 1000 hertz so I can move that around I'll just show you here okay and I can vary the level Here's the thing, I'm doing this with a microphone. Uh, I got a good quality microphones and stuff in here and my experimenting with them, although limited, has indicated that they go as low, get this, as low as five hertz. And I don't know how high they go, but they go way down. That's really a stunning thing for me. I, ne I never realized these microphones were that sensitive. Of course, you can't hear five hertz. You can barely feel it. You need a speaker the size of your car to feel that, I would think. So anyway. What we can do here now is we can look for harmonics. So at a thousand hertz, the first harmonic should show up at two kilohertz, and another one at three, four, five. Usually you can see the first and second one, it's hard to see more than that. To generate the harmonics, I gotta turn up the volume again. And just watch on the frequency display for more uh, signals to show up. Did that make sense? It made sense to me. So, first I'm going to turn up the volume on the radio. There they are. Right there. It's quite interesting. I don't hear it. You sure see it. It really goes away at this volume setting. Don't increase the volume at all. Yeah. Now, um, again, the computer software is doing things uh, that we could misinterpret. So, for instance, it's auto ranging on the screen. So as I turn the volume up, the main peak doesn't seem to change size. Uh, I think that's just auto leveling and things like that going on. I'm not sure. Actually, we could look at the scale. We could look at the scale on the side of the display there. Nope. Okay, I take all that back. I take all that back. It did seem to just keep getting higher. Actually, you know, when the harmonics show up, the main pulse stops growing. And it's up at zero dB. Okay, I'm blowing my ears off. Too much did I say something about turning down the volume during this? So I probably overdrove the audio on the video quite a bit and I'm sorry if it did that. So what are we finding out? We're finding out under high volume, some harmonics show up, but they don't bother my ear very much. I don't, I don't, I'm not reacting to them. Turn it up really loud, yeah, then something changes. Could even be the speaker itself is reaching its own limits at that point, and making the sound change. And again, at that volume level, I'm standing here listening to it. This radio is never going to be played at that volume level. That's blasting. So, uh, I think all this is indicating it's working well enough to be used, um, but we still need to check the uh, voltage of the grid. 
which is not the easiest thing to do because it's a very, very high impedance circuit. Grid is five. Boy, I almost made a suicide mistake there. <laughs> I almost took this and clamped it in my teeth. And I'd be sparking up the bike, the plastic part, but I just don't think sticking voltmeter leads in your mouth is a good way to go. <laughs> Five. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Five is off this this is the this is the blocker. Well that's a pretty good reading, minus twelve. Now did anything happen to the volume? I don't think so. Now, if we stick this on here, does it suddenly leap up? It's fixed pretty solid, isn't it? Maybe, you know what, maybe the technique they're using here, this is the drop power supply, I don't know what to call this, maybe that produces a pretty solid uh, bias. So the question is, minus 12, how's that factor in for 6F6? I can't remember. I cannot remember. So I'll grab the book. Better not put my book back where I just took it from. It's pretty hot. 6F6. 6F6. Grid bias. Grid number one, control grid voltage, minus 16. On fixed bias of 250, or minus 20 for a fixed bias. Cathode bias, they don't report it. <laughs> Probably don't report it because you can't measure it or something like that. So they would report it as a cathode bias thing or something like that. Cathode bias resistor. So it just tells me the amount of the resistor. 410. But we don't have cathode bias. We have another. I think it's fixed bias is what we would call this. Come down here. Oh, this is push-pull single to class A, which is what we're doing. We're in class A operation here. So you know what? Everything's checking out just fine. There's nothing apparently wrong with the audio circuits. But I am going to go ahead Replace this, that capacitor. Look, there's a bunch more down in here. There's, there's all kinds of them down in there. Hard to get at, too. But they're all going to go. Um, they're all involved in either the uh, output, audio output, or, or there might be something in the power supply in there. I don't, I don't know. There's a pretty big one right in here. If anything curious happens, on with the video. But, well, I didn't get anywhere before I decided I had more to show on camera here. So, have a look at the situation. So, I, I want to do work down in here. I got this big capacitor here. Can you see there's another one? Right there, underneath it. And there's some resistors in here. There's just a whole schmozzle of parts in here. There's a terminal strip, and that's why all these parts are, 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 are shoved in here to attach to the terminal strip. So I want to do this guy, and I want to do that one back there, and I can't even see the terminal strip. You know, maybe when I get this big one out of here, I'll have, I'll feel a little better about the situation. But right now, wow, that's tough. And again, all these wires are stiff; they're not going anywhere. I can't bend them out of the way or anything. You just got to stay put and work around them. Oh, there we go. How about that? There, that's much better. 3D view of the ugliness in there. Oh my gosh. And right through is that big, it's a red high wattage resistor running right, right through the middle of it there. We should get rid of that probably too. Oh my gosh. Okay, you know, while the camera's rolling, I'm going to snip that big, big capacitor. Sets off, power wires disconnected. Oh, 
I get a much better view of things now, that's for sure. I think the other end of this is going to a grounded terminal, chassis grounded terminal. This is a 0.25, I'm pretty sure. 0.25, there. What do we see? We see a nice looking dog bone resistor in there. We see another one up here. We see another dog bone down there. And then a regular non, non dog bonish resistor back under there. There's four resistors packed in there. And then a capacitor tucked down here. So at this point, I have no reason to think those resistors are bad. This big high wattage one uh, is probably worth checking. Uh, it's it's just one end on the negative bus. <coughs> the other end is well, <laughs> who knows what there, where that's going. Well, the lead is bent under it where you can't see it, and it ties to this terminal here. And that terminal ties to this yellow little yellow dog bone resistor. I think that's what's going on there. So we got, you know what that sounds like? Doesn't that sound like the uh, sounds like those two mystery resistors that provide the bias? The capacitor I cut out has nothing to do with those parts. You know there's another resistor on that terminal. So there's a terminal with three resistors coming off it. The big dog boner is hooked up to the to the negative negative bus. Oh my gosh! And the big the big one is red, so body end dot. Body's red too, and the end the end is what color is that? Red, purple, twenty seven. 27, and then the dot. There's the dot. dot. Dot's probably orange or brown. So orange would be 27K, brown would be 27. Pop the schematic back on the screen here. We'll take a look at it. Okay, so I think I might be looking at these. Look at that. 27. 270. Well, one watt, half watt. So that big long one is this one. So it must be uh, red, uh, purple, and then brown to beat the 270 at one watt. So we should see. And then it's hooked up to a 27 ohm half water. And then it's hooked up. There's the other resistor right here, 470, 470. So and is that the end of the road? Yeah. Well, let's check the values on these. These three guys. Okay. Let's try this guy here because... No, we won't. We'll leave them, leave them hooked up. Leave everything hooked up the way it was. I've got too many meters now. A man with many meters never knows what time it is. So the first one is the big one, and that's supposed to be 20, 27. Can you stay put there, meter. I believe it's this terminal. This is the 
tricky part to there. I should have anticipated 270. There. So there's that's probably the 270. Touch low. And uh, now that feeds into another 27. And I think I see it in there. Uh, red. Uh, looks like red, black, red. Okay, so it goes to ground. So that one goes to ground. So quickly grabbing the schematic. Okay, so one that goes to ground is going to be this one here, the 27. So that should say 27. Now, low resistance measurements. Okay, so one is to ground. Now let's stick it over here. And the other end of it is right here. So, okay, here we go. 27. Hot diggity dog. Okay, so those guys are okay. And I think I was going to try to find this one. This is the other one that must be hooked in right in the spot here. 470. And that's basically the only one left. That would be that yellow one. And the yellow one. I hope it's okay. I don't want to get in there and change these. saying that. I remember saying half that amount, isn't it? Half a million. Half a million, one million. How much difference can it really make? Ten meg. No, that's this. Uh, okay, almost, almost nothing here. Half a million here. Two million there. So what if the half million's a million? There's a filter thing happening here. That's a big capacitor I just uh, half cut out. Is it worth going all the way in there? The radio's working fairly well. I don't know that my reading was correct. I can't. I just can't see that. That's worth. It's, it's more important to get the capacitor out of there. I think. Oh, who's come? Who is here? Guess who it is? It's finally found me here. Peanut, what's up today? You leaving? Okay. That's good. I'm sure he wants to go outside, but the temperature outside is very cold. Winter is definitely showing up here. Uh, it's a couple of degrees above freezing out there this morning. I don't think they really like going out in that kind of cold. But of course, they don't up that. Okay, so there's another resistor up in behind there. Why don't we just check that last one? If one of these is bad, maybe I'll be inclined to get in and do them all way up there. On the schematic, it would have to be, that's got to be the 2.2 .2 mega ohm one, I think.
that's pretty big, isn't it? Three. Supposed to be 2.2, it's 3. The other one's supposed to be half, and it's 1. Mega. Um, radio's working fine. I think I'm just going to focus on the capacitor there and not worry about the resistors. Um, if they are acting as a voltage divider, the two of them have gone up in value such that the division's almost the same still. <laughs> Not on camera though. Back to just changing that capacitor way back in there. Okay, so I think I figured a couple things out here. I haven't changed any capacitors yet. So this guy here, this is 0.01 on it. Okay, uh, he is going to be. Um, this one here off the slider of the volume control so there's another capacitor right down here I can't read the value on it but I'm willing to guess this is probably 0.015 and it's probably this one right here and off the back tab as I call it off the volume control there's another resistor, 10,000, which I'm pretty sure I can see in there, right here. I think I can see uh, body and dot, brown, black, orange. So that's that's exactly it, right in there. Can't really see it on camera. It's really tough to see into this radio. So it's another one worth testing. Maybe I should check that one since I know what it is now or what it's supposed to be. 10K. 10K. Where, 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 where'd he go? Here he is here. 10K, yeah, R7, 10K. These resistors don't, uh, they don't work very hard. So it really would be kind of surprising if it's way off. Testing in circuit. Lots of readings. Take your take your pick. There we are. So 10k, 9.3k, perfect. That's good. It's okay. It's no problem. Okay, those two capacitors. Let's see if I can't do those two capacitors. They're, they're kind of messing around with the audio at the front of the audio thing. I'll do those two capacitors. I'll put. I'll replace the big big guy I took out this one here. Then we'll test the radio one after that. See if I can actually get to some some real work here. Yeah, I mutter something about no good camera angle. It's a great a great camera angle. <laughs> yeah. You see a chunk of wire. Soldered right in. That's my little tidbit there. I don't want to get on. Or hook. No, I didn't see that. I can hook this. Might be wet. 
might be the best I can do. Might be. That's not bad. There's nowhere to get these pliers in. soldering that. Pretty good, actually. Okay, now the other end just swings over like this. So much stuff in the way, I got no tool movement clearance here. There. There we go. Okay. Turn up my soldering iron a couple of degrees here. solder in here to increase the rate at which heat is, is flowing into the uh, terminal here. Give it a little bit of time. Whack more solder. Okay, man. Up underneath here. There we go. Give it a moment. That's a moment. Off you come. Excess tidbit of wire in there. wasn't like that for long. Okay, so that's two of these three difficult, well, two of the capacitors are difficult. Now, what's difficult about this is remembering where, where it came from. <laughs> that's, that's my first challenge. I don't remember at all. You know what we're going to do at this point? We're going to test these three capacitors that I've taken out and see where we're at with that.
Okay. So this is the blocker on the volume control wiper that keeps the AVC voltage from leaking forward in the radio. I think that's what this one was. 25 volts, how leaky is it? Looks great. Doesn't look like it's hooked up. Or maybe the capacitor is not uh, working at all. 0.01. Let's just, let's just give it a moment here to engage. Well, how could it have picked up any charge from that? Okay, so 0.01. Here. Uh, should find it here. Zero zero one. Uh, that's point one. Point oh one right there. Should be right here. Uh -huh. Put this on point oh one. You got me. This one is point oh one. You know what it is? I know what it is. No, maybe not. <laughs> I had it set wrong, but it's not making any effect on this. What am I doing? Am I doing something wrong here? Yeah, but it works at the end of the scale, and you just ignore it. Well, you got me. Wouldn't open anywhere. Okay, so let's try this proper setting here, leakage through this capacitor. We'll retest the other one again, because I had it set wrong. Leakage. Yeah, that, that's why the other one would look great. Yeah, leaky. So let's take a, this one here, which I fooled myself. I think there's nothing wrong with it. It's probably so leaky, there's no way we're going to be able to measure its capacitance. 25 volts. Yeah, see, it didn't open all the way, even on 25 volts. I'm not going to open on that, so it's, yeah, it's a piece of junk. Oh my, i got to be careful. This, this knob, that's all I'm going to say about it. Guess do the big guy now. 0.25. 25 volts. expect it to close a bit and then swing open because uh, we're talking 250 volts. What's this guy supposedly good for? 400? Probably. 200. Whoops. <laughs> it's an unusual rating. 200. 200. That doesn't seem right. Well, it's showing as if it's absolutely zero leakage. So I will try to measure its capacitance. 0.25 is what I said. 0.25 would come up on this scale. 0.25 would be, I think, reading here. So maybe we can trust this reading. It's right at the end of the scale again. So on this scale, 0.25 should be way over here. Point 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.25 right in here. So, I think its capacity is lost. Perhaps there's some uh, literally electrical contact defect inside here somehow. Maybe it's only half what it should be. I don't know. 0 0.25. So we did them all. They're all kind of leaky bad. 
So I'll stick a new 0.25 in and we'll give this guy another test. Okay, I'm gonna change my mind again. Change my mind a lot to, today. I'm gonna, gonna video this connection onto this terminal right here. You see a little tidbit of wire sticking out there? That terminal is just uh, riveted to the chassis, so that's a, it's a ground terminal. Now there's a wire, there's a wire really, really close here. So they're just moving a bit. Oh, so stiff. It's gonna crack. Hang on to it. Ah, that's about the best I can do. Still, it's not in contact now, so that should be okay. I'll see if I can. See that hole in there? I'm going to try to get the wire to go through that hole. That's my aim. Oh, there's just there's just wires all over the place behind it here. Go to solder and I'm gonna burn those wires. Man, you, you just you can't see how difficult this is <laughs> from the camera shot. Hey, I have more than one camera. You gotta tell yourself at this point, this is the fun of doing this work. Just keep telling yourself that. Huh? Soldering iron warmed up here. You just throw a little solder in there first to get the heat flow happening. here that's not so good. Let me cover it. There we go. And I'm aiming for this piece of wire right here. Okay, over here. Ah, it's got no grip.
good. Good. Yeah, I think earlier I mumbled about not knowing where this capacitor was supposed to go, but in fact I, I didn't say it. It was easy to remember. Because I left some wire tails sticking out. the three of them in there. Let me double double check here. So we've got a near short circuit happening from here to this. Ugh, that's that's ripping out of that capacitor. Don't anybody use that capacitor anymore. Wow, okay, I thought that was going to come right up, but obviously it's not going to. I <laughs> just wrecked the heck out of the inside. Let's get rid of this. Whoa! <laughs> that flew through my laundry room, believe it or not. Push that back in there. Okay, now the capacitors I just put in. Just double checking here. that along already. Good. We're ready to go here. So let me get rid of the solder because too easy to short something out with a piece of solder. Okay, we'll hook the power lines back up. Power is off. I basically left everything hooked up just as it was. Let me turn on some equipment, put this back on the scope here. It comes with this, um, I mean if you've got cameras you know this, it comes with this uh, useless, useless appearing little wire clip. But in fact this thing is really, really useful. It's really very practical. You know that if you have a camera. Okay, I'm just gonna. I should really have the radio operating while I'm doing this. Everything safe? Ready? Yeah. So again, we're gonna do the dim bulb thing so you can keep your eye on this light right here. If it goes on full tilt, then I blew something. What if it doesn't come on at all? If it doesn't come on at all, that's also a big problem. Why do those lights not come on? Yeah. Oh. No, it is turned on. Oh, well, it could be this problem. <laughs> uh, yes. Standard error number 41 I make almost every time. Power's off. This time. Can't crack my fingers that way anyway. Okay. Watching the light bulb. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. You know, as I improve the capacitors in here, there's less and less leakage. Now, it may be a tiny amount that's really of no concern, but. It can only draw less and less power as I go here. Full power. What all are we doing here? 
That's a signal going in. Sounds like it's not even connected. Shouldn't we hear a nice tone? Everybody be ready. And you suddenly make a make a loud tone. Uh, what's the problem? I'll have to guess my signal generator is not producing any signal. Let's see. Fix that, shouldn't I? Wow! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, okay, so that was screaming out of the speaker of the radio there. Yikes! It's interesting, it's not killing the radio anymore. Didn't this kill the radio when I hooked up the uh, signal generator before? Yeah, is it effect of some of the capacitors they just changed? Questions everywhere. Questions everywhere. Now, what level of signal are we putting in? I guess I have to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, it's still showing here. did there was I backed down the uh, uh, volume here in the shop that you're listening to. By the way, why don't we take a peek at the out of focus scope here. Have a peek at this. Okay, that was a peek at that. You know, I can't turn this thing up to get that distortion. It's going to be so loud. It's going to blow my ears off. The problems with my scope connection. Blow my ears off. Let's change things a little bit here. Just bear with me while I do this live right now. So we'll go top right. That's number two, the top right. Here it comes. There it is. That's a very low signal we're feeding into the radio to produce that sound of the uh, speaker. I, I'm a little bit freaked out in that the, uh, the radio sound is still there. Uh, it must be these capacitors must have had this effect. I, maybe if I study the schematic, I can figure out why exactly, but I'm not going to bother. So to get the uh, distortion we saw before, i got to turn this thing way up. Ridiculously loud. Okay, everybody, I'm going to turn down my microphones a little more. Okay, and we're going to watch for distortion on the scope. That hurt my little ears. Well, uh, the fact is, I had to turn it up almost all the way again. You can see the same kind of distortion. You can hear it. I could hear it. I don't know what came over the microphones. I had them turned fairly low. 
it's exactly the same behavior. It hasn't changed from the few components I just I just did. So, uh, but something has definitely changed on the radio. Okay, let's take a look. I'm curious, which capacitor is it that would have? See, I'm feeding the signal in right across this volume control. Feeding it in top and ground. The voltmeter is measuring the slider on this side of the capacitor. I change this capacitor. I can't explain why I changed this one too. I also changed this guy. I believe it was this one over here. This guy can't have anything to do with it. It's got to be these two. So if these are acting more like resistors, I don't know. These are these are great big resistors here. So let's say it's this guy. This guy is. Uh, so he would he would draw. Uh, it'd be like shorting it to ground here, if, if this capacitor is not uh, doing its thing and it was leaking. Point two five here. Maybe this is the two five I did. That's if this one's leaky. I don't know how. I don't know what it would do. To be honest with you, it's just it's just too much in here for me to sort out. Uh, can't help. So okay, so I, I can't I can't provide an explanation for why my signal generator is no longer shorting out the radio, but it is not shorting it out. Okay. I think that's it. I think I've talked enough, done enough. Beautiful. So we still have some more capacitors here in the audio. I'm going to leave them for now. And uh, what is on the scope there? He says becoming curious or fight again. Well, that's an odd looking thing, isn't it? That's on the volume control. Huh. Some, some kind of 60 cycle uh, weird component in there. Well, that's worth noticing anyway. I don't know what the implications are for that. Strange, very kind of weird definitely a weird weird wave shape okay we'll leave it at that <laughs> just pick up tomorrow from here and carry on great hey thanks so much for watching